Hi, everybody. So I'm still deburring uh, pieces for the uh, ailerons and have uh, a couple members around asking questions. Note to self, I need a secondary deburring tool, speed deburring tool. You can see I've got one in my hands, but I had to have the extension on for uh, the various flanges and stuff. And uh, switching that out and removing the extension and going back and forth is just an awful pain. And were I more organized, it wouldn't be so much of a pain, but doing the organization is more work than it's actually worth. Look at that sweat. Jeez. It was still pretty toasty that day. I mentioned uh, a couple of videos back. We had just gone through a heat wave. and My God. I mean, San Francisco reached an all-time high. It was 106 in San Francisco. It has never been 106 in San Francisco. Well, at least not in modern history. Probably 400 million years ago. So here I'm doing, uh, so there's some countersinking that you need to do. There's some brackets that get attached to the edge ribs. Each edge rib for the ailerons has a different uh, type of bracket with a number 12 hole that's used as a pivot point. So yeah, uh, between building and being the maintenance officer now, it's uh, it's a lot of responsibility. I'm really hoping that I can, I'm, I'm, I'm basically spending a lot of time right now ramping up, like I said, large learning curve. I'm just trying to get everything settled to the point where, uh, you know, as plane captain, I only had to deal with one plane. Actually, what happened was I was... Uh, we have four we have four aircraft three Cessnas and a Piper and I was one of the Cessnas plane captains <clears throat> uh, another one of the plane captains uh, just has become unavailable so I volunteered to just double up and be the plane captain for two not a lot of responsibility basically you know you just uh, take care of squawks and make sure that the maintenance officer knows what needs to be fixed and do any kind of oil changes and etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's not that in itself isn't really that bad maintenance officer work however is a lot more involved I gotta make sure all the equipment's ordered I gotta make sure all the planes I gotta prioritize which plane is being fixed first and when because we have a new mechanic but we only have one so we can't just have them do everything at once and so it's a lot of work and I unfortunately for the near future see myself not being able to work on my plane as much as I'd like I have this, so the week that I'm in here, I have this entire week off, and my plan was to do like 60 hours of work on the wings. I wanted to get the ailerons done, I wanted to get the flaps done, and I wanted to start working on the main spars. Uh, at this point now, I'll be happy if I can get the ailerons done. I really don't like being put off schedule, but can't be helped. <clears throat> And that's life. You know, you buy a kit from Vans, you put down a nice chunk deposit, you know, this is not, these aren't not inexpensive pieces. You find a place to work, you find a place where you can get to quickly so that you don't have a big commute, you don't want to waste any time, you want to just be able to build, build, build. And then life just uh, presents opportunities that you didn't know that uh, you even had or needed or wanted. Basically the president of our club just texts me and says, hey, our maintenance officer is retiring. Are you ready to become the maintenance officer? I said, sure. Why not? I'm a glutton for punishment. 
So now here uh, for the ribs, I've moved on to, so, there, so the there's a couple of end ribs as well. Like I said, most of the skins are just held together with stiffeners that basically make a rib type shape when they're put together and riveted. Uh, but the uh, ends, of course, still have uh, some ribs because they need to be solid. So I've uh, bandsawed the, oh, here comes more. Oh, hold on. Fire truck. Sorry about that. So working on the end ribs here <clears throat> and getting ready to prime everything because you start riveting stuff quickly. And that's one thing you learn when you start reading through the instructions uh, is you start recognizing when you need to stop. Because I think there was uh, the third instruction on page two was, you know, go ahead and dimple. And I'm not dimpling anything until everything has been cleaned, scuffed, and primed. So you just, you start to learn how to reorganize these instructions as you go through this to make the best use of your time. Anyway, just going to keep doing that, and I'm not sure when the next set of videos are up. Probably going to be another week or so, but hopefully they'll be, uh, hopefully they'll have something to show you other than just my tired face. So, see you soon.